The Lockheed Skunk Works, California. Generations of deep black aircraft were built here. In recent years, its parking lot has remained full. Yet officially, it has little work underway. Too little to explain all the activity. Production of its Blackbird spy plane is long finished. Its last contract was for the stealth fighter. That is near completion. It cannot explain the work being done behind closed doors. Is a new deep black triangular aircraft being built? Aviation experts suspect that the answer lies in a 1985 Pentagon document. A mysterious aircraft codenamed Aurora Project was accidentally included alongside budgets for the U-2 and Blackbird spy planes. There has been no mention of it since. The first thing I heard about Aurora was that air traffic controllers out on the west coast were being told to expect very high speed targets on their radar screens. Um, that it was a classified program, um, that they weren't to panic and they weren't to report it to anybody else. The next piece of information, and the one that I think really started me investigating the Aurora story, was a sequence of sonic booms over California. On Thursday, June 18th, 1992, at 7 in the morning, and on six other Thursdays at the same hour in the preceding year, there was a minor tremor in Los Angeles. Spurred on by telephone calls from worried residents, Jim Morey of the U.S. Geological Survey set out to discover what was causing this unusually punctual earthquake. At his disposal is a network of seismic recording stations. He quickly established that it was a double sonic boom from a supersonic aircraft. Morey compared the signature of the aircraft's sonic boom with the patterns produced by those of the space shuttle landing outside of Los Angeles and by the SR-71 Blackbird on its world speed record transcontinental flight in 1991. It was completely different. The size and spread of the boom was unique. We actually have quite a few sonic booms in Southern California. One of the reasons is that the space shuttle lands at Edwards Air Force Base, which is in the desert here. It's possible to tell the direction, the speed, and the height of the object that's producing the sonic boom if you have good instrumental recording. So for these mystery booms that we saw, it's clear that they are flying um, offshore. Um, because we don't have any stations there, we don't have very much data, so we really couldn't get an accurate estimate of how fast that particular object was traveling. All we can really say is it was traveling faster than the speed of sound. And one of the possibilities is that it could be meteorite, and there are instances of meteorites producing similar booms. Obviously, though, a meteorite happening every Thursday morning seems a little unlikely. The official explanation was that U.S. Navy fighters were responsible, but few experts were convinced. The breakthrough came when Bill Sweetman received an eyewitness drawing of what he felt could only be the Aurora. I had written a couple of Aurora stories suggesting that the evidence was accumulating that something was out there. And I received in the mail a sketch and a note from a man named Chris Gibson. This eyewitness is one of the best in the business. Chris Gibson was a member of Britain's Royal Observer Corps. He was part of their elite international recognition team, one of the top military aircraft observers in the world. One day in 1989, while working on an oil rig in the North Sea, a colleague called Chris outside. There was a formation of four aircraft. The lead aircraft was a KC-135 Stratotanker, and off its port side were two F-111 fighter bombers. Off the tail of the KC-135 Stratotanker was a black triangular aircraft. No, no wings, no tail, a perfect triangle. And uh, there's nothing that I've ever seen before looked like that, which uh, was an unusual occurrence, because uh, I'm trained in instant recognition by the Royal Observer Corps. And uh, if I didn't know what it was, it's not in any books. This shape and the sonic booms told Bill Sweetman a great deal. If you're looking at an aircraft that is designed to fly at what's loosely called 
hypersonic speeds at five or six times the speed of sound or upwards. There are several things that become absolutely essential. Uh, one is that uh, you require a very high degree of sweep back on the wing leading edges. Otherwise, you start getting into severe problems of drag and aerodynamic heating. As you go into this very slender shape, you still need to have a lot of volume in that shape for fuel, um, for propulsion, for crew. And the best way to provide that is to blend the wing and the body together. You get a very characteristic, um, highly blended triangular shape, um, which is, in plan view, identical to what Chris saw. In Amarillo, Texas, Steve Douglas may have captured photographic evidence of the aurora. He maintains sophisticated military signals monitoring equipment in his home. March, I think it was March 23rd, 1992. I was back here in my office when the house was shook by what sounded like a large sonic boom. I'd heard a lot of, a lot of sonic boom before, so I know they how they sound, but this one seemed to continue. It wasn't just a, a crack boom and left. It was a rather large shudder that you could feel in your chest and the windows vibrated. And that's when I saw this very high-speed aircraft flying over the house at incredible rate. Um, I grabbed my camera knowing it was something, something uh, different, especially because of the way the contrail worked. The Donuts on a Rope contrail is produced by no conventional aircraft. Its engine noise is also unique. It's a deep, thrumming, regular pulsing, booming noise, like somebody unzipping the sky. You feel it more in your chest than you hear it. It doesn't sound like a jet. It doesn't sound like a rocket. It's just very unique and uh, an amazing sound. The Donuts on a Rope contrail has been reported from around the world. This never-before-seen footage was taken by an amateur cameraman from a transatlantic passenger jet. It is very hard to hide an aircraft like the Aurora. Steve switched on his radios. On a military frequency reserved for spy satellites, he heard the call sign, Dark Star. Dark Star Sierra. Dark Star Sierra Formation Crew. Dark Star Sierra Formation Crew. Dark Star Sierra Formation Crew. Be advised for that. Dark Star Sierra, out. I'd never heard Dark Star before, and I keep lists of thousands of call signs. The contrail and engine noise are the signature of a pulsed detonation engine, the kind of engine necessary to fly at hypersonic speeds. With a cruising speed of 5,300 miles per hour, Mach 8, operating in near orbit at an altitude of 50 to 80 miles, the Aurora could reach anywhere in the world in three hours. But not everyone believes the Aurora exists. The name Aurora first appeared as part of an unclassified budget document. It was assumed by people that this is referring to uh, a hypersonic aircraft program. Uh, ben Rich, uh, the former head of the Skunk Works, however, later revealed that this was actually the funding item for the development of the B-2 bomber, that it had nothing to do with a hypersonic airplane, and he has flatly said that such an airplane does not exist. Aurora is not a belief system. Aurora is a continuing investigation which is not yet closed. Personally, I think that there's overwhelming evidence that there is a high-speed program out there. Like the deep black projects that came before it, the Aurora's existence is still denied. If the Aurora does exist, its main test base would probably be Dreamland at Groom Lake, Area 51, in the Nevada nuclear test site. 